They fled from tyranny. Your oppressions planted them in America. And yet, actuated by principles of true English liberty, they met all hardships with pleasure compared with those they suffered in their own country from the hands of those that should have been their friends. Men whose behavior on many occasions has caused the blood of those sons of liberty to recoil within them. I know not what course others meet, but as for me, give me liberty, liberty. or give me death. Believe me, remember, I this day told you so. That same spirit of freedom which actuated that people at first will accompany them still. But a people jealous of their liberties liberty. and who will vindicate them if ever they should be violated. Sons of liberty. Sons of liberty. Sons of liberty. liberty. Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God. Who controls the past, controls the future. Who controls the present, controls the past. The death of bin Laden marks the most significant achievement to date in our nation's effort to defeat Al-Qaeda. All you gotta do is start looking around, start thinking for yourself, start investigating things, and you will see it all right there. So you have the power. Humanity has the power. We have the power. Do you want to fight? You better believe you got one. Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories. As for me, give me liberty or give me death. The answer to 1984 is 1776. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. This is what we have in store for you for this March 25th, 2013 edition. Tonight, while the Department of Homeland Security continues to ignore members of Congress who are demanding to know why the federal agency is engaged in an apparent arms buildup, the DHS has just announced it plans to purchase another 360,000 rounds of hollow point ammunition, this adding to the 2 billion bullets already purchased over the past year. Meanwhile, a retired army captain says Americans may have to prepare to defend themselves against the Obama administration's coup against the American people. Next, a vial containing a potentially harmful virus has gone missing from a laboratory at the University of Texas. Plus, best-selling author and historian Jim Mars in studio. And a total paradigm shift with Billy Corgan of Smashing Pumpkins. The entire interview with Alex Jones, up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. And welcome back. Top story headline, DHS to buy 360,000 more rounds of hollow point ammunition. You can see the Drudge link right there, Miss... Napolitano, I, yes, I do swear to uh, shoot you with these bullets. And we'll look at the article right here. Our current count is about 2 billion bullets, but it varies from agency to agency, different reports. Another 360,000 rounds of hollow point ammunition to add to roughly 2 billion bullets. A solicitation of the Federal Business Opportunities website details that DHS is planned to purchase 360,000 rounds of commercial leaded training uh, ammunition. You can see the quotes right there. Although the DHS has attempted to explain its mammoth purchase of ammunition by claiming the bullets are being acquired in bulk to save money and that they are for training purposes only, this has been disputed. Of course, they're not doing this to save you money because jacketed hollow point bullets are twice as expensive as your normal bullets, as the, the article points out. So they're saying, yeah, we use these to, uh, to practice with. Well, you're supposed to practice with what you shoot from the last time I checked. And if you practice with, you know, flat top ammunition, then you need to shoot flat top ammunition. If you practice with hollow points, you need to shoot hollow points. But like, as we already pointed out, I mean, your hollow point ammunition is much more expensive, especially if you buy in bulk. So why in the world would you buy something so expensive to, uh, to use? It makes absolutely no sense. And not just that, the quantity of it, uh, people vary in their opinion. I believe the last number I was told was uh, they bought enough ammunition for 
what is it, 30 years, 20 or 30 years, and that's calculating the ammunition used at the height of the Iraq war. So it's a whole lot of bullets for target practice. I have no idea why you need that. But it ties into our next story. Retired Army captain warns DHS acquisitions are a bold threat of war against the American people. And you can see, re, uh, excuse me, retired United States Army Captain uh, Terry Hastelow publicly voiced grave concerns over the DHS's absurd acquisitions, posting a letter to Senator John Cornyn on Facebook labeling the Obama administration's recent appropriation of weapons a bold threat of war against American citizens. And he goes on to say, you can see his quotes right there. It is with gravest concern that I write you today concerning the recent appropriation of weapons by the Department of Homeland Security that can only be understood as a bold threat of war by the agency. Now, he has a very good point pointing out not just the bullets, but also I believe it's 2,000 plus weapons, fully automatic AR-15s that were purchased by the Department of Homeland Security, even though they say they don't want you to have one, they bought fully automatic ones, and also tanks. And that actually goes into our next article video hundreds of dhs armored trucks on the move and we'll play this video for you in just one second you can see right there and just let it run and i want everybody to take an account how many trucks are on this train look at all those armored personnel vehicles i mean those things are supposed to be mine proof or excuse me at least mine resistant and you'll see in just one second yeah there are some dump trucks and other things on there but a good number of those trucks are armored personnel vehicles and people say, well, those are for the military. I'm sure the military does use things like that, but we showed you the video last week, I believe it was, or maybe the week before, of the guy from DHS saying, hey, these are for us. They have DHS painted all over the vehicles. They have police painted all over the vehicles. So yes, the military may use things like that, but DHS is planning to use them as well. And for what reason, you might ask, they say it's for warrant enforcement. That's not us saying that. That's what they said they plan to use these things for, warrant enforcement. Your neighborhood police drive around in a uh, sedan, black and white. They use that for warrant enforcement. So I'm curious what the DHS needs these big tank-like things for. And maybe they are going to use them for warrant enforcement. But my thing is, if they use these for warrant enforcement, what are they going to use for, for some actual uh, tactical situation? Are they going to fly down the Death Star when they have a, another Chris Dorner? I don't know. It sounds completely ridiculous to me. But we'll switch gears right here to McCain gets behind Senate attack on Second Amendment. No surprise there, you know, I got guys, uh, freedom hating guys like John McCain. Republican Arizona Senator John McCain will work with Senate Democrats on legislation to expand background checks for private sales of firearms between individuals. The article goes on to say, arguments presented by Democrats have consistently portrayed the Second Amendment as a hunting and self-defense right. The founders, however, insisted the Second Amendment was included in the Bill of Rights so that citizens would be would be sufficiently armed to resist tyranny. Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, a Nevada Democrat, will introduce bipartisan gun violence legislation on the Senate floor in April. It is uncertain if the bill will get the 60 votes required to beat a filibuster. And it's not just McCain, it's not just Reid. You also have, of course, Mrs. Feinstein and also Mark Kirk, also blowing the horn of uh, gun, uh, sticky hand, gun taking uh, legislation. But also we have this. Obama to hit the trail on a mission to revive gun control fight. Yeah, he, he uh, told you he would not take your rifle away, would not take your shotgun away, and he seems like he's doing just that. With the Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid planning to bring a scaled-back package of gun legislation to the Senate floor early next month, the White House is hoping they can rebuild some momentum that's been lost in the months since the Newtown shootings. A White House official would not comment on the timing of more presidential travel, but said people should expect to see Obama travel outside D.C. to bolster his, ins his insistence that gun control measures, quote, deserve a vote in Congress. When I take your rifle away, when I take your shotgun away, it wasn't even six months ago, I don't think, that he was debating Mitt Romney. He was saying he wants to take away your AK-47, wants to take away your, quote, cheap handgun. And you say, well, you don't need an AK-47. A low capacity magazine put inside an AK-47 is the same thing as a deer rifle. I mean, just think about it. That's what the thing is. We'll move on now to some fairly local news here in Austin. End gun show loophole. Acevedo tells U.S. House panel. Now, this is our police chief here in Austin, Art Acevedo. The universal background check is the first and essential step toward comprehensive reform of gun laws. Acevedo told the U.S. House's uh, Gun Violence Prevention Task Force, Without this essential element, there can be no lasting impact on gun violence, 
because without this legislation, guns will continue to be sold to those who are not permitted to possess a firearm. Moving down, he specifically cited the shootings at the elementary school in Newtown, Connecticut. Specifically talking about the Sandy Hook shootings, these people keep using this instance as a need for stricter background check control, uh, more, uh, more hoops and uh, flaming loops to jump through to get your firearms. But the Newtown situation, regardless if you believe that uh, particular situation or not, I'm still waiting to see the surveillance footage. I mean, my condolences to all those, but I think there's some things that have not been told about that. But that instance in particular, that is the ideal situation of a background check. You have a guy who was turned down, I believe, five times that we know about just because of the background check system. The system worked. What is the problem? Why do they keep bringing this up, saying that we need stricter background checks when the background check worked in that situation? That's like if you, like if you buy a P90X and you lose 50 pounds in 80 days, but you have a 90-day warranty, so you send it back anywhere, like, ha, 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 give me my money back. This is pretty much the same thing they're doing with this uh, background situation, the Sandy Hook, the background situation worked but they're still telling you that it didn't work. And also, I believe we have a clip from Alex Jones talking about just this issue. Art, if you think the citizens not having guns, this goes for the rest of the police chiefs that work for the foreign banks one way or another. If you think that uh, guns uh, are so uh, evil in, the cit in, in citizens' hands, you should move back to Cuba, you should move to North Korea, you should move to communist China where they got mobile execution vans. How dare you come to America and flee tyranny and try to put it on me and my family? And I take it real personal because I know you. I take it real personal. I get sick when I see all these police chiefs up there. I'm going to roll some video for radio uh, listeners. We'll post it up at Infowars.com. But here's FBI.gov and the crime statistics from 1991 to 2011. The latest numbers. A 49% drop in violent crime nationwide on average, and you can look at the graph of gun ownership, it, it, it goes up, the crime goes down. You know that. You know within one year of Texas having concealed carry, violent home invasions, carjackings, and other aggravated assaults went down by more than 30%. You know more than 25% in Florida, and you know the same similar number in every stinking state in this country. And I am sick of you and your hoax. You want our guns because the globalists are getting ready to implode this country. And you want us to be like people in Mexico who had their guns taken 100 years ago and who have been slaves ever since. Mexico has a total ban on citizen guns, and they have the highest gun crime rate in the world. There's your message, Arde Saveda. Go ahead and go get your Justice Department job. Maybe you'll really show off for him. Maybe you'll go to the Justice Department and be like Eric Holder, who was involved in Oklahoma City. Maybe you'll go there and uh, teach us how to ship guns into Mexico to kill thousands of innocent people so you can blame it. Maybe you'll show the Justice Department what a good collaborator you are. Why don't you go back to Cuba and go apologize to Fidel Castro, who's killed hundreds of thousands of his own people after taking their guns. Why don't you go, Comrade Fidel, I love you. I love what you do. I want to take the guns from America. Why don't you come to America, Fidel, and help us run everything there? We will take the guns, Fidel. I will prove to you, Comrade, what we will do to them. Yeah. Oh, I'm supposed to just go, oh, my police chief says put felony if I have over a seven-round mag. He says shut down the gun show. Oh, I can't give my dad a gun. He can't give me a gun. All right, another good rant there from Alex. Now I want to just direct people's attention to the site. The campaign to close the gun show loophole, you can see it right there on your screen. This is just not a Texas thing, and I'm sure people are aware of that as of now. I mean, if this can happen in Texas, where can't this happen? within the United States. We have our police chief on board with this gun grab, also our uh, mayor of Austin, as well as the mayor of Dallas, San Antonio, just to name a few. So definitely be aware of this. So it's not just Texas, you have Colorado and other states are, that are historically pro-gun. And they say this gun show loophole, I just want people to know, for people who have never bought a gun or they hear Feinstein lie about it on TV, this notion that you can go to a gun show and buy whatever you want without any type of oversight or background check is not entirely true. Are there private sellers at gun shows? Yes. Do all private sellers require a background check? No. But if you go to a gun show and you buy your firearm from a licensed dealer such as I have, I've been to two different gun shows, bought two different firearms from two different people, 
and both times they ran a background check on me. So this notion that you can just go walk in the gun show, pay some my cash, and walk out with a bazooka is not, you know I mean, it, it doesn't happen like that every single day. I mean, are there private sellers? Of course, but there are also still plenty of people who do require a background check, so definitely be aware of that. And we'll move on now to our last article for the night. Virus goes missing at UTMB lab. A vial containing a potentially harmful virus has gone missing from a laboratory at the University of Texas Medical Branch, officials say. And for more on that, we have a special report from Alex Jones. I have found that even the most ignorant people I talk to are aware of the long history of the so-called U.S. government and other Western governments testing chemicals, biologicals, radiologicals on U.S. cities from St. Louis, Missouri to New York City, New York, uh, to Santa Fe, New Mexico, to Dallas, Texas. There have been thousands of programs declassified, and some programs or operations had thousands of tests within them. And you can look this up on the Department of Energy's own website. Uh, in one uh, decade-long program, 4,300-plus foster children radiated to death. That's putting children in a chamber and giving them dif different dosages of radiation. In some cases, they were dead within minutes. They were the lucky ones. Some, it took years to die. And there's the ringworm children testing in Israel, 110,000 kids. That's why I say the government's bad. That's why we don't turn our, our guns in. Because our government cannot be trusted. Our founders taught us that. And at Infowars.com, we try to focus in on real threats, real threats. There are over 200 admitted, they've got more, level four bioweapons labs in the U.S. There were only about 100 10 years ago. They've doubled them. And they develop bioweapons, airborne Ebola, just one example, weaponized mousepox that kills 90 plus percent of humans it comes in contact with. And the one facility out of over 200 that I fingered as the type of place I expect something bad to happen at is the Galveston facility built on a barrier island that is the biggest U.S. loss of life from a natural disaster ever. Almost 10,000 people died when a hurricane hit it 100 years ago. You can look that up. And they, it, it gets totally flooded all the time, devastated all the time. Uh, and they've got a level four bioweapons lab there in a level two facility. That means swipe cards and kind of you know, little glass enclosure uh, lab areas. And they've got everything. They've got weaponized stuff in there that is airborne and kills almost everybody that comes in contact with it. Now they have missing uh, enough of a type of hemorrhagic fever or Venezuelan jungle fever that's airborne uh, and that they thought was a bioweapon attack back in the 90s when it first showed up because it was so deadly. And then, of course, our loving government got samples of it, cultured it, uh, and now uh, a container of it, enough to infect millions of mice and rats, that's who spreads it, uh, is now missing. And, of course, it may turn out you know, later that it was just misplaced. The point is, is that this is the type of cover story they're going to use when they release a 13-monkey type scenario. And I cover that in my film, End Game Blueprint for Global Enslavement. Now, this story's out. Everybody's saying, Alex, you got to cover it. you got to cover it. This is not the first time this lab has had problems. It's been hit by hurricanes and uh, had massive damage. Now, a level four is supposed to have three rows of fence, machine gun nest, minefield, and then it's supposed to be underground, at least three stories, with explosive firebombs in it to burn out everything if... Uh, anything gets released. It's automated. Of course, they just don't do that. That's the international treaties. Okay, so uh, now uh, hemorrhagic fever, a uh, really nasty type of jungle, Venezuelan hemorrhagic fever uh, is uh, missing. And hey, I know what you'll just do. You'll just say it doesn't exist. I understand. That's that's. Uh, there's no three billion bullets. There's no, or two billion bullets. There's no thousands of armored vehicles. There's no checkpoints. There's no FEMA being set up as a domestic military, a new branch of the military for the American people. Everything's fine. And Obama wouldn't raise taxes on poor people, but he did. Uh, but it's okay because he said he wouldn't, and lo being lied to is a great thing. Now, here's an article a few years ago, BioLab and Galveston raises concerns. Uh, New York Times was reporting on that. Here's our report last year. There are literally more than 50 reports we've put out 
and I, I told my crew to go out and do this report. We, we went out and asked Austinites, are you concerned about the 30 or so level four bioweapons labs in Texas alone? Are you concerned about this? Uh, do you know that Lyme's disease, weaponized uh, type of syphilis, that's what it is, they call it Lyme's disease, uh, was bred at Plum Island off the coast of New York and released in New York. Maybe you don't care about that. Maybe you don't care about any of this. You know, Dr. Eric Pianca at UT, we cover this in my film Endgame, Blueprint for Global uh, Enslavement. Uh, Dr. Eric Pianca, uh, he came out uh, 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 four or five years ago and said, we need to reduce world population by 90%, and I can't wait till the airborne Ebola is released. Me and my family are ready to die. We're sad about it, but it's for the earth. And he gave a speech to the Texas Academy of Sciences and was given a standing ovation when he said similar things. So, um, you know, the FBI went and visited him about it, but it's par for the course. He had graduate students and people sending me emails saying he doesn't go far enough. We need to get rid of all humans. And then I looked up one of the graduate students, now a PhD uh, doctor, and she was working in a level four bioweapon lab in Southern California. These are people that say kill everyone, and they're working uh, in biology at UT uh, in bioweapons uh, areas like Pianca has access to. Well, he's the head of one of the departments. Uh, and uh, on his own official UT website, last time I checked, been up there for like six, seven years. Uh, he talks about how much he loves Lucifer. I don't know, loves Lucifer, wants everybody to die, and his graduate students all swarmed in on me. Uh, and I looked up one of them that said all humans should die, and she works in bioweapons. Just, you know, not a big deal, nothing to nothing to look into or anything. You know, I'm an extremist, I'm a bad man. Now, let's just trust a government uh, that's been caught killing tens of thousands of us and different secret tests that they've declassified. Uh, let's just trust these people. Uh, everything's fine. And let's just trust the fact that they're gearing up for domestic warfare with two billion plus bullets and thousands of armored vehicles and domestic security forces that they all admit. I am begging all of you to go to Infowars.com and to go to this area of the site. A retired Army captain warns DHS uh, acquisitions are bold threat of war against the American people and that a coup d'etat uh, is taking place. And, and it's a soft coup. You'll never hear about it. It's just, oh, now we have checkpoints in America. Now we can disappear you. Now we can drone you. It's all happening. It's all happening. If you don't have checks and balances, strong men come in. Special interests come in and take everything because it's an act of total domination. So we'll get this video that I'm uh, shooting right now up on InfoWars.com. There's an important rebroadcast today. I'm doing 4 to 6 p.m. on Agenda 21 and with George Norrie for the syndicated Sunday show that's usually live. And I'll be back tomorrow live, 11 a.m. Central, with the big official radio show. But everything is accelerating. Everything is accelerating. They're coming after the guns. Everything. I told you they would. Your denial is what is empowering them. Get up. Speak out, get involved, defend the Republic. Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com on the real threat of bioweapons labs filled, in some cases, with hundreds of pathogens that will kill nine out of ten people. And that's conservative. Some mouse pox estimates are 98 plus percent. And guess what universities in the U.S. just did last year? They released the recombinant breakdown on RNA and DNA and viruses, bacteria, you name it, to be able to create hundreds and hundreds of different bioweapons that can be done in labs for a few hundred thousand dollars. That way they have plausible deniability when they release it. When all the little drones fly over and release it on you and your family. Oh, you better look up the Sunshine Project. They got Marine Corps documents a decade ago. The Marine Corps told them to reclassify them, so they took them down, but they're still online. Look into Project Sunshine and the program to spray U.S. cities. It's on the Google uh, archive. Again, or maybe you shouldn't look into it because, you know, I'm a conspiracy theorist. Everything's okay. Take all the vaccines. Drink the fluoride water. Feed your kids GMO. The government loves you. And this issue is something we've been talking about at InfoWars for quite a while. I believe it's about a year ago, Darren McBreen filed a report about bioweapons in uh, student laboratories. 
Government-funded universities across the Western world are developing massive warehouses full of bioweapons that they say is for biodefense under the BioShield program. Airborne Ebola, smallpox, bubonic plague, bird flu, and the H1N1 superbug are being weaponized and kept in moderately secured facilities like at the Galveston National Laboratory on the campus of the University of Texas. Now this may be one of the biggest threats we now face as the risk of a deadly virus escaping one of these laboratories and starting a global pandemic, well it is a clear and present danger. Weaponized airborne Ebola, super weaponized viruses and bacteria that kill over 90%, nine out of 10 people on your street dead. The National Research Council, which is an arm of the National Academy of Sciences, released a report concerning potential hazardous risk associated with the new multi-million dollar infectious disease research lab currently under construction in Kansas. It's located only 120 miles west of Kansas City. It's called the National Bio and Agro Defense Facility. And even though it's a level four bio lab, which is the highest secured rating issued by the CDC, the expert panel found that there is nearly a 70% chance that a disease will escape the laboratory during its planned 50-year operational lifespan. And it went on to say that the U.S. Department of Homeland Security has not adequately gauged the potential risk of a dangerous airborne pathogen escaping the compound. Let me put this in layman terms. A level four bioweapons lab should be three floors under the ground, barbed wire fences, minefields, and machine guns, and a system that if the super germs get out, they pull a lever, alarms go off, and the whole place goes up in flames. But instead, the global elite are storing it in level two facilities, like the University of Texas at Galveston, behind a glass door with a swipe card, right there in Petri dishes. And they're doing this so that when they release it to massively reduce population, they can claim it was an accident. All right, and that brings us to our end of the show. So let's go now to our quote of the day. This from Walt Whitman. There is no week, nor day, nor hour when tyranny may not enter upon this country. If the people lose their roughness and spirit of defiance, that by Walt Whitman. Okay, so we're at the end of our show, at least for this segment. Stay tuned. After this break, we'll be back with a pre-taped interview I did last week with one Mr. Jim Mars about various topics. But first, if you'd like to support this broadcast, go to prisonplanet.tv. Get yourself a 15-day free trial. You can see it all right there, the Alex Jones radio show, the rants, the special reports. It's all there waiting for you on prisonplanet.tv. And also, I'd like to encourage everybody, there's about a month left for Operation Paul Revere, our film contest, $115,000 in prizes. You can see it right there on your screen. The due date is, uh, excuse me, April 30th. It's not, you know, the next day or, you know, <laughs> hit, hit the timeline, follow your rules, get it in on time so you can be a, uh, a contestant. We got plenty of people who have already uh, submitted, so don't forget to submit yours by April 30th. And that's it for this segment. We'll be right back with Mr. Jim Mars. I'm Darren McBreen, and these are some of the new items that are available now at InfoWarsShop.com. Alert the public to Obama's blatant abuse of power with the new Obama t-shirt. Obama's joker face on the front and come and take it on the back. It's time to publicly call him out for what he is, a tyrant. Defend the Second Amendment with our top seller come and take it t-shirts. And look at that, women's cut tank tops and t-shirts now available. Nice hat. Plus, the Don't Tread on Me flag. And now you can become a micro distributor of the InfoWars magazine. Plus, get your own copy delivered right to your door each and every month. And if you're tired like I am of you and your family being exposed to polluted drinking water, get the Pro One High Performance Water Filter. It gets rid of all pathogenic bacteria, cyst, fluoride, heavy metals, and numerous other contaminants. So join the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. InfoWars Magazine is more than just our answer to the internet kill switch. 
We're also going back to the roots of this country. When our founders, for a decade before 1776, known as the pamphleteers, with hundreds of little printing presses in every colony, got out the real news, the real information, and countered the system. This is tailored, designed with the truth to wake up your friends and family. This is the 21st century version of the pamphleteers. So get them at InfoWarsShop.com or InfoWarsStore.com. Sign up and buy them in bulk. Sign up and be a micro distributor uh, for a full year to buy them in bulk and get one of the newsstands added. Or sign up and get 12 issues delivered to your door or give a gift subscription. Whatever you do, be part of the fight. And I want to salute and thank all of you that are subscribers and are getting the magazine in bulk or who have ever come to InfoWarsStore.com and bought any of our products because we are supported by patriots and liberty lovers like you. We couldn't do it without you. And welcome back. Our guest tonight is Jim Mars. He is a historian and best-selling author of many works, including his latest, Our Occulted History. He joins us now in studio to talk about his works. Thanks for joining us today, Jim. Hey, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. Now, I hear you have the recent analysis on the Cypress situation. Well, what have you come across? Well, I mean, I'm just looking at it. And of course, you know, they shut down the ATMs. They closed the banks. So you can't get your money back. Um, and they were proposing uh, like almost a 9.9, a 10% uh, tax on your savings. On <laughs> no, your money. Yeah, on your the money you put in there that, to save, they're gonna they're gonna rob it. Uh, but I think there's more to it than that. Apparently, uh, Cyprus has been a tax shelter and a tax haven for a lot of wealthy Russians, and this could be part of the kind of the sub rosa covert new nouveau. Cold War that's going on, uh, and and Russia I think understands it better than we do. Uh, I know Cyprus went to Russia and tried to ask for a big loan to try to pull them out, and they said no, mm. uh, because I think they understand what's going on. But to me, this is all. I think it's a uh, practice run. I think they're practicing to see how the people on Cyprus and how the European Union people and uh, uh, handle this and how they perceive it and how they react to it. And if they're able to get away with this, then you, I think you're going to see this in other ca countries. Uh, I now, think, Jim, do you think there's any reason why this location was chosen, Cyprus? Uh, well, again, because they had some heavy money there uh, from the uh, Russian oligarchs. Mm. And uh, I think that, number one, they could get, get their hands on a lot of money. And, and number two, again, this was a uh, swipe at Russia. Russia's always been a target for the international bankers because both under the czars and under the communists, uh, they would not play ball and would not create a central bank and would not have, you know, we have a central bank now. Mm -hmm. It's called the Federal Reserve System. Exactly. I'm they glad you mentioned that. They, they, <laughs> it's not federal. <laughs> they, it's neither federal nor does it have any reserves. But, and they don't call it a, a central bank, except actually they've begun to. Uh, that's pretty interesting. All my life, they never referred to the Federal Reserve System as a central bank. But in the last 10 years or so, just on the news, you'll hear, yeah, the central bank today. So we got one, even though that was the biggest point of contention of our founding fathers, was whether or not to have a central bank. And most of them, including Jefferson, said no, because look what they've done in Europe. Exactly. Whoever controls the money, controls the government, controls the country. And this is the whole name of the game. And, of course, people hear that all the time. Alex and others are always talking about, uh, well, the Occupy movement. You know, they're talking about the 1%. Uh, and number one, this is now fully documented. This is not a conspiracy theory. In 2011, the Swiss Institute of uh, Financial whatever uh, control did a study, and they found out of 43,000 international corporations, they're all controlled by 1,000. And out of that 1,000, they are controlled by 147 companies, which in turn, because of cross-directorships and ownerships, are controlled by 20. And most of those are banks, okay? And Collectively, these tw people within these 20 companies control the 43,000 corporations and 60% of, the, uh, of the world's uh, wealth. 
That is incredible control, and it is incredible tight central control, mm -hmm. and this is what they're after. How do they do that? Well, I would mention the uh, Exchange Stabilization Fund. How many people have heard of that? No, <laughs> nobody. And the Financial Stability Board. You ever heard of that? I heard you talk about that last night. <laughs> okay. All right. The Exchange Stabilization Fund was created back during the New Deal in the 30s, uh, and uh, it's a little-known office of the Secretary of the Treasury, and it handles the, sh the transfer of gold and, and wealth between all of the industrial nations. And uh, interestingly enough, even at the time it was created, some of the complaints in Congress was that it would operate outside of U.S. law and outside the Constitution. And uh, they also, this is where all the, uh, the black budgets are hidden. The CIA, the NSA, when they have all this money, and uh, well, for instance, the CIA, we all know that they have front companies, mm -hmm. airlines, restaurant strings, who knows? And some of those companies are not just totally bogus. They're actually companies, and they actually produce goods and services. Legitimate businesses. Legitimate businesses. In some ways. And they get, they get tons of money. Where does that money go? goes into the uh, Exchange Stabilization Fund, and the Exchange Stabilization Fund also was the founder of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank, which we also have always heard how they go into these countries and say, now you're going to do this or we won't give you any money. This is the control mechanisms within the control of the entire planet, and uh, this is, this is uh, what Alex is always talking about. And uh, this is the point of contact. This is where the rubber hits the road, where they can actually do this. And if you go and look inside, you find Hank Paulson, you find Timothy Geithner, you find all of the, the people that end up in the headlines running our economy. Mm -hmm. So it's not just us. This is a worldwide system, and it's uh, been planned for a long time. And they are operating their plan, and the, the idea is to get the whole world socialized. I'm glad you say it's a worldwide system because people will see these things in, in Europe, they'll see it in Cyprus, wherever else it is, and they'll say, well, that's an isolated, isolated incident, that's yeah. that country, that'll never happen here. So when you hear this argument, it can never happen here, what would you say to somebody? Because they see the, uh, the bank runs, they see the, uh, the bank holidays, right. you know, they can't withdraw their funds. So what would you say to somebody here in the States? Well, I'd say, number one, not only can it happen, in fact, it could happen tomorrow, but it has happened. It happened during the Great Depression. Actually, I remember just a few years ago, maybe five or six years ago, there was a, a, a bank in uh, Seattle up in the Northwest was having problems and they just closed the door. And people down there are saying, hey, I want my money back. And they're going, well, not right now, you know. And it, <laughs> and it took them months, you know, for the federal receivers to, to take over and to finally settle out and, you know. But that's one bank having one problem. Well, they're all in trouble now, mm -hmm. and they're all having trouble. And in Cyprus, for example, once they heard that they were going to try to tax these savings accounts, everybody rushed down and tried to close out their savings account. Exactly. They closed down the banks. Said, no, in fact, I don't think they're going to be open until next Thursday. Uh -oh. Now, just think about what happens tomorrow if President Obama suddenly announces that we're going to have a bank holiday in the current crisis to try to straighten things out. And, it, you know, what's day? Uh, Friday. Friday. He said it's only going to last through next Wednesday. Okay? Well, a lot of bills to pay between now and that then. Does, yeah, it doesn't sound too bad on that point, but then think about it. That means until next Wednesday, you can't deposit money, you can't withdraw money, you can't use your ATM, mm -hmm. and you can't use your credit cards. Exactly. This place would fall into chaos, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, especially <laughs> you got that long weekend between... <laughs> Oh, it, it would definitely, definitely It'd be a drab fall weekend. <laughs> so, what would you recommend to somebody, not just here in the states, but anywhere? You know, they have the money in the bank. Would you recommend withdrawing Get funds? Get your money or? out of the bank. You should only keep enough money in the bank to pay uh, a month or two ahead in bills, and everything else. Is, if it's in paper, then you're you're running a risk. And what would you do with it? I don't know. Some people say buy gold, but then. I don't know. Uh, you can't eat gold. Yeah. You know, I would say buy property, buy tangible assets, uh, buy tomato seeds. <laughs> you know, it, it just anything, tangible assets. Exactly. Uh, okay. They're trying to take guns away right now, but you know what? 
uh, in the history of the world, uh, a, a quality firearm has done nothing but appreciate value. Mm -hmm. We just saw that recently with the uh, the recent gun grab, you know, after the Sandy Hook shooting, and you know the price of an AR-15 was what a thousand bucks, and what's it five thousand plus AK-47s? You used to be able to get those maybe four or five hundred right. bucks back in the day. Now they'll start at a thousand. Back in the day, I remember uh, you could get those plastic uh, 15, 30 round clips for the uh, 10, 22 for five or six bucks, mm -hmm. and then they tried to outlaw them, and you could still get them because it, they, it was grandfathered. So right. anyone that were already existing, you could still sell and trade. So it really didn't do anything. They were still available, but instead of five or six bucks, it went to more than a hundred dollars. And, and folks, this is what happens all through history. Uh, the day before they passed the Volstead Act, which was look right here, Jim. which was prohibition, mm -hmm. right? Uh, a little pint of hooch uh, cost about uh, about three dollars. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, after that became illegal, you know, it was like it was like fifty or sixty dollars. Uh, all in the world you do is create a huge black market and the criminals get rich. Mm -hmm. Now we hear the popular argument speaking about the gun the gun grab. They say, well, uh, we saw Feinstein, I believe it was last week, say, well, I don't want people to have guns because I don't want people to be able to go out and buy a bazooka. And my argument mm -hmm. is, you know, if you have bazookas, the, the lack of availability of a bazooka or at least the ammunition for it, I think is reasonable control enough. You know, yeah. you can't go to your big box store and buy, you know, bazooka ammunition or if you ask for it, they're gonna call it ATF on you. <laughs> but, right, and and I, I'll, I, I I'd ask you this: When's the last time you heard of somebody killed by a bazooka? Not in the <laughs> U.S. I can't recall ever hearing not somebody. Here. If, if people just don't get it. I mean, if strict gun control laws would uh, actually rid the streets of crime, uh, what happened to Chicago? <laughs> that's the that's the case point in question because they always say get the guns off the street, get the guns off the street, and then they hear about all these shootings in Chicago, which there are shootings, but these aren't your law-abiding citizens no. who you know accidentally shoot their dog when somebody breaks no. into their house. These are the criminals who never forfeited their guns. Right. These are the criminals who are getting their guns off the black market. So how does this logic work that you get guns out of law-abiding citizens' hands? Well, and Chicago has some of the toughest anti-gun laws in the whole country. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Washington, D.C. So here's two of the places with the toughest gun laws, and they have the highest crime and highest murder rates. Get, uh, come on, folks, use your head. Uh, it's that simple. Uh, it, it, it's just, it's nuts. Uh, and besides that, we have a constitution that says uh, the right of the people to bear arms shall, shall not, not be, be infringed. infringed. Infringed means you don't even mess around with it. And personally, I think it's a God-given right because, as the old quote goes, uh, God created everyone equal, but Samuel Colt made them equal. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard that. That's a good one. Well, you know, you got a 90-pound, 72-year-old woman. Mm -hmm. uh, if she's got a 45, she's just as, uh, she can, she yeah, can she oppose. Six, five, two, yeah, she 20. can oppose the 6'5", <laughs> 220 guy, you know? It's, it's, it's really true. Uh, and then, of course, the argument is, well, yes, but we've had all these shootings here, all these shooting deaths in the United States. They're twisting the fact Number one, their statistics are technically correct, but then they say, but see, Britain doesn't have that high. Well, no, Britain ain't got any guns. They gave them up. Exactly. And, and uh, of course, so that's going to skew the numbers. But and even there, the, they kill with an ax or they'll stab you. Exactly. But even in Britain, they, uh, they have their crime statistics staggered a little differently. Like, right. for example, here in the U.S., let's say uh, three people were shot in a drive-by shooting. That's three different incidents. If three people were shot by a drive-by shooting in Britain, that's one incident. Right. And the and the numbers are skewed and stacked right. in ways like that. But I don't want to spend all the time on that. No. Jim, you also have a, a new book. Got a new book, Our Occulted History. Oh boy, this is, uh, number one, this has got an explanation of the Exchange Stabilization Fund in there. It also quotes from the 2011 study to show that just this handful of people control the economy of the world. Uh, basically, uh, the whole back part of the book uh, is the New World Order, mm -hmm. and uh, with the numbers, statistics, facts, to show you that it goes beyond conspiracy theory. Now, my question that I bring up in here is, well, who are these folks, 
and why do they think they have the right to uh, rule over everyone? Mm -hmm. And what I find is it tracks all the way back through history. What I was really shocked and amazed at is that uh, in 2000, the selection of 2000, uh, Bush, George W. Bush, of course, was running against Al Gore. And we now know that Al Gore won the election, all right? But they stopped the count in Florida and the Supreme Court gave it to uh, Bush. Bush. So that's the selection of 2000. But yet I knew that was gonna happen because uh, the, uh, uh, there was some uh, stories from um, England on this prestigious genealogical uh, study, uh, Burke's Peerage, and they said that Bush would get the presidency because although he and Gore were both related, mm -hmm. and they were both related to the royal family of England, the Windsors, the Bushes were a little closer related. So he'd get it because in the history of the United States, every president that's the closest to the royals of England gets the knock. And I'm, I'm glad you bring that up because I hear this often that, you know, all these guys are related and Obama is support, supposedly related to uh, Cheney or, or something yeah. like that. Can you explain a little bit about how that works? Well, th that's the thing that blew me away is I, I knew that from 2000 and I knew that uh, John Kerry who ran against Bush in uh, 2004, I knew that they were related. And they were both members of Skull and Bones mm -hmm. and Secret Society, et cetera, et cetera. And so I'm figuring, well, they're all keeping it in the family here. But then I thought, well, Barack Hussein Obama, how can he be related, right? It turns out he is. And this is not me, not some conspiracy theorist. This is Lynn Cheney, the wife of Dick Cheney, who said as she was researching their family's history, they find out that Obama is a, I think, a 10th cousin. You know, it's, wait a minute. I mean, are you related to the Windsors? Not that I'm aware of. And neither am I. We're not running for president, are we? <laughs> no, no, that's, a, that's another good point. Now, do they select these people, or how, how do you get in the presidential race at that at that level. I mean, do they call you out, hey, I want you to run for president? Do you start out for president and you just get promoted if you're in the proper bloodline? Like, how does that work? If you're in the proper bread, b bloodline, you are groomed and you are placed in that position. Uh, Bill Clinton seemed to be an exception. His background is pretty murky. Mm -hmm. We're not sure where he came from, and the person that they identify as his father is apparently kind of a nobody. Uh, so it was kind of like, wow, how did that happen? But then in my travels in Arkansas, I hear the rumor, and it's just a rumor, that actually he was the illegitimate son of Winthrop Rockefeller, who really? was governor of Arkansas, and has been closely associated with the Clinton family. In fact, uh, it was Bill Clinton that... Uh, uh, drove Hale Boggs to the airport on his <laughs> flight that never came back. Yep. Hale, Hale Boggs being a uh, politician from Arkansas who sat on the Warren Commission and was one of the ones who was beginning to dissent and say, we think he was thinking, I, I don't think we were told the truth, and I think maybe there was a, a conspiracy against John Kennedy. And he took a junket up to Alaska and never came back. Bill Clinton drove him to the airport. So Bill Clinton has been groomed. He was a Rhodes Scholar, right? Mm -hmm. Where do they find some poor kid in Arkansas and send him over to England to be a Rhodes Scholar? That's so, a very, very So good they're, they're groomed. And, and Barack Obama, you know, he's, uh, he goes to Columbia and enrolls as a foreign exchange student. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, right? that's a very good point. Oh, wait a minute, he, it, it, because right there, it's an either or. Either he was a foreign exchange student, which means he's not an American citizen, which raises up that whole question, or he is an American citizen, and which means he lied and cheated and got his way in as a foreign exchange student. Either way, I think we got a problem there, and nobody seems willing or, or able to look into it. Yeah, and you were talking about last night uh, at the speech we went to in Bastrop, and you were saying if, if they want background checks for everybody, let's start with Barack Obama. <laughs> hey, man, he wants background checks if you want to buy a gun. I said, okay, well, we'll start with him. All right, well, Jim, we're about out of time. Do you have any closing thoughts? 
Um, you have, I think people need to understand that uh, we're looking here, and I'm just confirming what Alex and a lot of others are saying, which is uh, this is a plan that's unfolding, and the plan is to uh, virtually destroy the sovereignty and freedom of the United States. Uh, it's really an incredible situation because we are told that we were attacked on September the 11th, 2001 by terrorists who want to destroy our freedom and democracy. That's technically true. Okay, yeah, yeah. it is true. And, and they're winning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they are destroying our freedom and democracy. Uh, unfortunately, I think I think you'll agree with me. It doesn't it, when you peel away all of the pronouncements and all the flack and fluff. Uh, you find out it does not actually point to Middle Eastern terrorists. Does oh it? yeah, it, it's <laughs> definitely terrorists. I'm just not saying it's the people they, <laughs> they told us. Oh, it's what. terrorists, but it's not those Arab Muslim terrorists. Uh, it's right. uh, somebody else. And I don't think this is outside the realm of study and criticism uh, and debate, because I can distinctly recall on the afternoon or evening of September the 11th, uh, President Bush mm -hmm. said, essentially, I may be paraphrasing, but I'm close. He said, we must not rest until we find out who's responsible for this mm -hmm. and see that they're punished. So I'm just trying to do what my president said do. Mission accomplished. We saw him standing in front of the big banner, mission yeah. accomplished yeah. and whatnot. Jim Morris, thank you for your time, sir. Thank you. And that's it for our show. Definitely want to thank our guest, Mr. Jim Mars, and all the great reporters who were in this edition. So if you want to support this broadcast, go to prisonplanet.tv. Get yourself a 15-day free trial. You can see it all right there. The nightly news, the Alex Jones radio show, the movies, the rants, it's all right there. So I'm Jakari Jackson, and thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.